Welcome to Biohacking Wellness, where we teach you how to make small changes to your lifestyle and diet so you can gain incremental improvements to your health and well being. In other words, this is do it yourself biology. <laughs> we're laughing because we're still having to read this. We learned hey, this I, morning, I did pretty good. but we will memorize this. It's time to face the reality that our current medical system is broken and overpriced and has no idea how to manage chronic illness. The only answers they provide will leave you sick and bankrupt. We are here to empower you to take back your own health. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by a product that we're going to talk about later, which is Glutazyme from US Enzymes. Glutazyme has a mega dose of a particular enzyme called DPV4. I can never say that out loud. But this, this particular enzyme has been linked to a whole lot of chronic diseases. It's also been linked to actually breaking down gluten and getting rid of the gluten protein when you get cross-reactive. So when we are talking about these 12, this holiday survival guide, and these 12 steps, um, glutazyme is going to be an important part of that because it can be kind of a... Um, oops, I messed up, or a morning after pill, or <laughs> if you want to put it that way. But it is something we are going to suggest that when, if you are going to go to a, a, a party, when you go to a party, is something you can take ahead of time so that the inflammatory response from consuming things like gluten, dairy, and soy will be diminished by taking this particular product. But as always, with the products that we recommend, you do have to take another couple steps because I can't just leave you a link to just buy it. Um, you've actually got to sign up for an account with some of the some of the people that we use in US Enzymes is one of those people. So if you find it on, Enzyme, or on Amazon, there is a high probability that you are getting a fake. So just throwing that out there. All right. So today on my trusty notebook, <laughs> we have 12 steps to reducing your stress through the holidays. This is your holiday survival guide. We have a lot of our people that are on the program right now that are nervous, freaking out. Okay. Um, about how they're going to manage the holidays. Look, we get it. Um, we have to understand where people are coming from. Their language of love is still food. providing toxic food that's going to leave them. Well, it, they're going to miss their goals. I, I think that's what I remember. Like they've been working hard. They've been diligent. I, and then what's going to happen if I have, you know. I, I agree with you, but we all have those Aunt Carols of the world that want to make tons and tons of sugary treats to give us because that's how they show us that they love us. No, for sure. So we have to figure out a way to uh, navigate that without Offending. Put, putting strain on those relationships that are so important to our health and well-being. So that's where I was headed with that. Right. So step number one I in our... I think I was derailing you. No, you weren't. You just did though. Step number one on a holiday, holiday survival guide is literally stop worrying about it. Don't stress it. They, this is coming from a place from us going, okay, look, guys, you're going to have parties. You're going to have work events and all these other things that are going to be full of those favorite treats that our fellow Americans love to consume. Maybe they just love to consume them because they think they can do it guilt-free in December. Maybe. Let's face it, like they eat that stuff all the time anyway. They just don't feel guilty about it in December. Or anyway. In November. When it comes to those parties, don't overthink it. They just go with the flow. And if you get something here and there, or if you want to try this or that, just use some self-control. They don't sit and think it's going to completely derail the program. You'll see an uptick in your weight for a couple days. But if you get right back on board, then you're going to get right back on board. So when you're talking to your, co to your coaches about your program and what you've done, we're going to laugh with you. Uh, but really, seriously, don't stress about it. Don't why? Think I it. think you need to explain why. Stress equals stress hormones. So when you're physically sitting there going, what am I going to do to eat tonight at Aunt, you know, Aunt Carol's party? Literally doing, just thinking about it and like stressing about what you're going to do. You're going to raise your cortisol levels. When you raise your cortisol levels, that's going to create a blood sugar spike. That's just going to make this whole thing worse. So take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Hey, go mingle. 
Do your best with the food, just don't stress. Okay. Number two. This is the best because Brady actually can't read his own handwriting. Or maybe he just can't see because he needs his readers. But there's two truths right there. <laughs> Number two through is take it and say thank you. And we saw a perfect example of this last night. Uh, our, we have we a, a fundraising. We have, we have a cousin that's a politician and she had a fundraising thing. And we ran into one of my acquaintances from the radio station. No, it was not Neil. Uh, it was Neil's boss's boss. Anyway, uh, we ran into him and his wife, had this awesome conversation, and I made a crack because they both had a root beer float in their hands. And they asked where ours were. And they asked where ours were. I'm like, we can't do that. This is what, you know, we're not going to do You're like, that. you've listened to my radio yeah. ad. There's a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's just. You're being fun. Anyway. And he was like, you're right. We got to talking to these folks, and they literally... They weren't going to drink it had, They had no intentions of drinking. They just took it. And they were going to set it at their table. So they could be social. So they could be social. And I thought, that is awesome. So they took it and they said, thank you. So when you have family members or work coworkers or whoever that bring you stuff, and you're a great example of this, just take it and say thank you. Like, you don't have to eat it in front of them. Right. I know. I've done this because I've made the mistake in the past, right? Like... Somebody came up to me at work and they're like, hey, have you had lunch yet? And I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, so my wife is bringing a pizza for everybody. And I'm like, oh, I can't eat that. And I've literally hated that I said that. So like from that point on, I made a conscious choice to just be like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. He's not going to follow me around all day to see if I go in the break room and eat it. Or I have patients all the time bringing me, you know, homemade apple crisps and whatever. I'm not going to be like, what's in that? Can I read the label? I know it's something that I personally can't eat. But I don't need to tell them that. Just they're showing love and kindness right. and appreciation. So return that and gift it to somebody that would love yeah. it. And those you mentioned the little, you had one of your people, like Kim works with kids as a speech path on the daily. Darling child brings this little homemade apple. apple it was an apple pie or was it yeah, apple Yeah, it was a little apple pie. And obviously she put time and effort into that. And I, I just can't imagine her reaction. She's like, well, I can't eat that. Don't be that person. Just right. I was just like, like Kim, oh my goodness, thank you. Take it and say thank you. I even asked for the recipe. So, <laughs> so that's number two. And they were so excited. So. Hey, number three applies more to the closest people in your circle. Hey, this is your kids, maybe your parents, just the people that are really close to you. That is just to set boundaries. Set an expectation right from the beginning. Hey, your family should know what you're trying to accomplish. And they should know that if they make all these things and want to put all these things in your, you know, in for you to eat, they should know what you're trying to accomplish, what your goal is. So if you set that boundary, I think you'll find a lot less blowback. Um, and this doesn't... And, it, I, and it's setting it ahead of time. Not like when they hand it to you being like, yes. I don't need this, but it's like, ahead we've had time. these conversations ahead of time, like, hey, right. I'm really trying to, whatever it is, lose weight, you know, stick to this program. Maybe it's just, I don't have sugar this for the next month. I mean, there's multiple things you can say and do, and you can explain as in depth or little depth as you want, but. So let's, let's put this in context of, let's say you're going to a church party. You don't need to get the microphone up in front of the church party and say, hey, everybody, I'm trying to lose 15 more pounds. I'm not going to eat this and this. You don't need to do that. <laughs> hey, this is where take it and say thank you applies. Do your best to, when you're looking at the food that's provided. Just do your best. You know, I, the, the example that I'll use, I'll have more than one person that's gotten fried chicken and just peeled the skin off the chicken and eaten the chicken. If you have an autoimmune problem, that's not the best option. But if you don't, that is the best option. Just eat it and say thank you and just express some gratitude and don't stress it. Move on. Right. But the small circle. Right. You but your, your small circle, they need to know. Uh, number four is stay hydrated. When you're hydrated, and I'm not talking about just water, but water, electrolytes, you know, accordingly, you're not going to have the cravings and the sweets that are around you are not going to tempt you as much. So if someone brings in a thing of homemade chocolates, yeah. go to your office and drink your water and you're not going to crave it as much. Because right. I will say, going back to the other, the other ones, 
some people might take offense, but I think there's a lot of people that don't take offense no. when we're up front. Sometimes more of the problem is ourselves, right? Like we can't withstand the temptation. And so this, this is when this one comes in beautifully, right? Like what can we do to help ourselves withstand the temptation? Not that we're, because I don't think everybody's um, falling off the wagon, so to speak, at holidays is simply because they don't want to offend anybody. I mean, that might be a great excuse for people. You know what I mean? But I think a lot of times it's like, we can't really withstand it. So let's come up with some ways that we can right. have a little more. So having a, an emergency supply of element, which is the uh, the electrolyte we talk about so often, but I think this is where this helps. And if you're at work totally and you does. keep some element in your desk and you're tempted by all this sugary stuff that's around you, Pound a bottle of Element and watch those cravings go away. Seriously. So stay hydrated. That's, that is, uh, what number was that? That was I number four. Was four. Number five. This one's my, my, my most sugar recent one. favorite. This is, uh, break up with sugar. So we met this guy in Hawaii. I made friends with this dude because of course I cracked a couple wise cracks, but, uh, this man was six, four, probably about two twenty five, solid freaking muscle. Like he was, he was a specimen. Uh, the joke I made, I asked him what he did for a living. And when he said he was a mechanic shop in Scottsdale, an auto mechanic in Scottsdale, I'm like, bull, you were, you're like NFL. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it was funny, but it, we got to talking about diet and he says, you know, I broke up with sugar and I broke up with alcohol. And then he explained to me what that meant. He meant what he meant was during the week, he broke up with sugar. So on Sunday, he'll have a little bit of sugar. But he can't go crazy, uh, he can't he said. go crazy, he just has a little bit. I'm like, how cool is that? How easy is that to apply? So what does that apply to here? Okay, so we've got some holidays coming up and you have some days that there's gonna be some sugar. Right. So, so maybe it's Thanksgiving day. So for myself- But it doesn't need to be the whole week. <laughs> for myself right now, during the week, Monday through Saturday, I don't touch sugar. Now on Sunday we had a little treat. Guess what? It was sweet to me, and I didn't like. You didn't like. I didn't it. go ham because I didn't really like it. my taste buds had changed, and it was a little too much for me. So that's that's a huge win. So if you apply that to the holidays, you know, for right now, just stay away from it. If you want to have a little something on Sunday, well, fine, whatever. But when Thanksgiving rolls around, you haven't had sugar all week. Let yourself have a piece of pie. Kim knows this. Apple pie is my weakness. I plan on eating some <laughs> or one uh, Maybe <laughs> during Thanksgiving. Pie. But up until then, no. And you like, don't have to eat it after. Break up with it. And you don't have to eat it after. Just so send the leftovers home with other people. Enjoy it and move on. So break up with sugar. That is number five. Number six is to have a mindset of gratitude. Right, this is where I think um, meditation comes in. Uh, dream boards, you know, just having what you want to accomplish and being thankful for what you have. We could do a whole list of right uh, on this particular talk or topic, and maybe someday I will. Uh, but having that mindset of gratitude, I think it'll help a ton as well. So, uh, number seven is to focus on quality time with the people that you love. So rather than focusing on the foods that you're eating, focus on the fact that you're getting to spend time. What's the, what's the aunt's name? Aunt Bethany, <laughs> like Aunt Bethany from, uh, from Christmas vacation. It might be her last. So fo <laughs> focus on just having quality time with those people rather than. And I think that just needs to be a shift in general. Like I found that with myself, right? Like there's so many things I don't eat. It doesn't mean I don't still want to go to lunch with friends right. or I don't want to go out, but like, don't feel bad that I'm not eating. I don't care. Right. Like I just want to be. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna, I'm coming to enjoy time with you, but like food does not have to be involved for me. Right. Um, and when people make special efforts to have food there for me, like I'm super appreciative and I've had that happen several times. Like, oh, I knew you were coming. So I got this. That's, that's great. Like I totally love that. But like trying to like make that mindset shift for ourselves that like every gathering, every social that's event, true. every time with a friend, like I loved it. I didn't, it's been a couple of years, but I have a really good friend that I love dearly. And 
we're both kind of on this, these health journeys and we were like, we want to spend time together, but we don't want to go out to dinner together anymore because it's like, I don't want to go out to eat. And we met up at the park and we would walk for an hour. We got our talking time in, we'd go for a walk. It was awesome. So it's like, it's the time that, that that's what I think most people are craving. We've just thrown in this food to make it all. We think we have to, but right. you could make the shift in your family. It, like you could be the catalyst to change that too. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to throw in another recommendation here because it can include food, right. but why not find new recipes, figure out how to modify them to make them fit into a healthier pa a paleo, you know, bracket and make those things together. Right. In fact, one of the things that we're going to do during this next month is we're going to provide you with a, a list of holiday recipes that are better, better for you than just the green bee casserole crap. Right. Remember when I did that at New Year's with my family and we didn't really say what they were. And then when I kind of pulled some people like what, what the favorite thing was, we had like appetizers yeah. or whatever. Yep. And let me tell you, the top two were Kim approved as my household says recipes. Go figure. Yeah. Wow. So that's one through seven, which are all free things to do. The rest they, they have some costs involved, but there's well, except for one. Um, I feel like so, I'm like, ooh, what are you going to say? Number eight is sauna. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get some toxic stuff into you over the next couple of months. And if you make a, a habit of getting in a sauna once a day, then you're going to get rid of some of those those toxins. So and if you don't have one, if you're so out, here's, here's, hit up the gym. So if you don't have one, find a gym that does and get in a sauna. You can go on Amazon and I'll leave the link because there are products on Amazon. They're like $150 for a sauna that sits over your chair and your head sticks out. You can get it that way. Okay. Or you can spend a little more money and get an actual sauna that just plugs into a uh, regular wall outlet and have an actual sauna in your home. Or you could spend uh, a lot of money and get a sweet one. <laughs> like I have a friend that got like the Hey, ours does, ours does pretty awesome. Ours is awesome. I'm just saying there's like the spectrum. Yeah, there is a, a spectrum. So check them out. Have fun. So well, I'll leave a couple links in here because there's actually one on Amazon that's a little bit fancier, but it's still like under $2,000. And we're, my buddies and I were talking at the gym the other day about what's the best money we've ever spent. Mm -hmm. And it was funny to hear like the different answers. Mine was our sauna. I love that thing. Right. I don't feel the health benefits that you do, but... I love that we can sit in there together and that's just time that we know that we're going to be together. And you are getting rid out. of junk you don't realize. Yes, yes, I am. I just don't feel it as much as you do. So, number eight. He just doesn't pay as close attention. If you have the opportunity, get in sauna. Hey, number nine, red light therapy. Again, there's a lot of products available out there. I know local gyms offer them. Offer them. They're not laser. Someone called, I'm not going to do the laser at your office. I'm going to do it at Apple. It's not the same thing, <laughs> but Still point is, the gym has one. You can buy one on Amazon for like 50 bucks. Uh, but there are benefits in increasing your blood flow, increasing your immune system function, helping get rid of some of those toxins. So red light therapy. Especially will... if you live where it's dark a lot in the winter. Yep. yep. Number 10 is a freebie. Fresh air. Take a walk. I know the weather sucks. Well, today it doesn't. Today it's actually kind of awesome. Uh, but make a point, even in the wintertime, just throw your coat on, throw a hat on, get outside, breathe the cold air. Right. It still uh, feels good. Try to get some morning sunlight. You heard us rant on and on about that. But you're feeling stressed or you've just eaten a big meal, go take a walk. Say that's the key, right? At post meal. Yep. So if you're going to indulge a little bit more than you normally would on the holiday, fine. I would go back and say, if you're going to eat those foods, maybe just don't eat as much, right? Like take a bite or two of a few of the desserts, take a bite or two of the stuffing, take a bite or two. Like there's that little three bite principle that I right, love. Right. That's like, you know, tasting your palate enjoys it, but you don't have to eat like a plateful, right. but then always go for a walk. Your blood sugar will drop. Yep. So 
you know, it's it's perfectly acceptable. Everybody has an Uncle Larry that wants to go out and take a smoke after <laughs> after the meal. Why not make it socially acceptable and say, like, you know what, that was a delicious meal. I'll be back in 15 minutes and go for a walk. Right. Boom. I like it. Just think about that scene from uh, Grumpy Old Man. I think it was the second one. It's when he actually has the heart attack when he goes for the walk. Uh, well. <laughs> hey, number 11 is to increase your exercise. How many make... do we have? 12. Make a conscious effort to increase your output at the gym during the holidays. Your brain will thank you. Your body will thank you. Your insulin receptors will thank you. Just grind a little bit harder to get you through the holidays. True. Okay. Last but not least is the product Glutazyme. We mentioned it before in the, the intro. DPP4. I think I'm forgetting a V in there. DPPV4. No, the four is the V. I think he's just making DPP4. It. It's on the bottle. I thought I had a bottle of it, and I don't. Um, it is a great detox for getting, when you get foods that you, your body reacts to. It's a great way to get rid of them. Uh, again, we'll leave you a link so you can Do check it out. Do you know what it out. else it does? Improves sleep, decreases It, it reduces ADD, anxiety. It reduces yeah. anxiety. I mean, there's so many things. We, we'll do a whole blog post about DPP4 at some point. Uh, but for now, you can use it as a holiday detox and one of 12. So... Um, that's it. That's it. Running out of time. So let's make a quick re recap. Number one, don't stress. Number two, take it, say thank you. Number three, set boundaries with the people that are closest to you. Number four, stay hydrated. Number five, um, can't read my writing again. Break up with sugar. <laughs> that says break up with sugar. Hey, I wish you number six, like, maybe we'll find a way to put a picture of that <laughs> and stick it in there. Uh, number six, mindset, gratitude. Number seven, focus on quality time. Number eight, sauna. Number nine, red light therapy. Number 10, fresh air, take a walk. Number 11, increase your exercise effort. And then number 12, blue design. Blue design. So Merry Christmas, everybody. There's your holiday survival guide. We'll see you on the next episode.